Are you looking for ways to master your music right here on your iPhone? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you Grand Finale, which is a very cool app by Clev Grand, which can help you do just that. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, then consider subscribing. But today, I've got something pretty special, because for the longest time, folks have been asking me, how can I master my songs right here on my iPhone? I know I can do it on GarageBand. I know I can do it using Final Touch, which is the app that I recommend for mastering on iPad. But what about iPhone? What if you just want a simple way to get your songs mastered? Well, in this one, we're going to look at Grand Finale. So let's jump in right now and take a look. Now, to make this demonstration much simpler, I'm going to actually use Grand Finale on my iPad just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. But as you can see here, we have it available on the iPhone as well. And the only difference is that the interface is slightly different. You need to use it in portrait mode and you need to scroll through to get to the different modules. So I just wanted to show you that quickly now. But now let's jump into the iPad and I'll show you all of the ways that we can use Grand Finale to master our tracks. And here it is, Grand Finale here on my iPad. And you can see that it looks almost identical to the iPhone. We just don't need to scroll across. It's all on the screen. It's going to make it easier for me to demonstrate to you exactly what Grand Finale can do. Now, this is a paid app. It's about $15 US and it will vary depending where you are in the world. So head over to the App Store to check it out. And full disclosure, Clev Grand were kind enough to give me a copy for demonstration purposes. So now let's dive in and take a look. So let's take a tour of the interface here in Grand Finale now. You can see in the top left here, we have our input and output and limiter here. So we can change the input and the output gain, and we can adjust the limiter to be medium, fast, or slow. We've also got a high pass filter that we can add to that. And this sort of sits at the front and the end of our chain. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. We have our addition over here to the right. Now this is processed concurrently with all of the other things at the bottom. And if you look at this diagram here, it'll show you what I mean here. So you can see that we have all of the processing that goes through all of the effects, which are the ones at the bottom. And then we have this additional effects chain, which we can completely ignore, but it just gives us an additional compressor a di and a distortion plugin and some additional gain control there if we need to add in some more gain right at the end there. Down the bottom here, we have a standard compressor that we can just dial in. It's a single dial, single knob compressor, and we can change the type of compression from default, gentle and hard by tapping on the button at the bottom there. We've then got a multi-band compressor here where we can compress. If you haven't used a multi-band compressor, just consider your EQ. So think of a visual EQ where you've got your different frequencies. What a multi-band compressor does is it compresses at those different frequencies. So we can separately compress the low, the low mid, the high mid, or the high frequencies, and it means if you just want to really make like a vocal pop, you can pump up the high and compress more in the high end without impacting, without making your mix sound muddy or without compressing the low end. So that gives you a lot more finite control over how you compress your mix. We've then got a stereo tool, which is like a stereo widener. So if your mix is sounding too narrow, you want to widen it out, you can adjust the stereo tool. And again, we've got these presets down the bottom that we can tap on to use different types of widening effects. And finally, we have a very simple equalizer. So we have just a bass and a treble control, which we can turn down or turn up. And at the bottom here, we can tap on this for default, acoustic or ambient. So that is about it. And you might be looking at this going, that's a very simple approach to mastering. And it absolutely is. So if you're used to other apps or you've used Final Touch or other things before, then yeah, you may be thinking this doesn't have the same level of options that I have there. But especially if you're starting out in mastering, it is something that would be really good for you because you can learn some of the things that you would use in mastering. And then if you wanted to in the future, use a more detailed mastering suite, then you'll actually know what you're doing. So this will help you. Now we've also got down the bottom here, we've got the ability to import and to export. And then we've got the ability to manage our project. And importantly, we've got some presets here. So if we tap on presets, we've got a whole bunch of different presets that are going to help you learn the different things that the different sounds do. So if we tap on master, we can check all the different mastering presets. We've got a bus section here. If you want to master, say, just our drum bus or just some vocals, then we've got separate ones for drums, vocals, bass, and you've got your own user presets there. So if we actually uh, dial in a preset that we want to use on a future track, we can actually save it in as a preset, which is pretty darn cool. So that is the interface. Like I said, it's pretty simple. It's pretty clean. And when you see us jump in and start using it with a track, you'll see that it's really intuitive and easy to use. So let's do that right now. 
So let's get a track in here and show you what Grand Finale can do. Now that we do have some import options here in the bottom left, we can import from iTunes, we can extract from a video, which is an interesting option, or we can use Audio Share Import. So if you do have Audio Share, which I do, that's a good option. You can tap on that one and it'll ask if you want to open Audio Share, and then we can use Audio Share to import our track. But that is another paid app. It's about two or three dollars. It's well worth getting. But if you don't have Audio Share, don't worry. We can still send an audio file from another app directly into Grand Finale. So let's do that now. And not surprisingly, the app that I'm going to choose is GarageBand here in iOS. So this is my track, What You Deserve. It sounds a bit like this. Talk is easy, it's hard to choose. So I'm close to my final mix and I do want to master this track. So I'm going to jump into Grand Finale and see what it can do and give it a test. And maybe I'll use it to master and do my final master of this track. So what we need to do is tap on my songs to go back to here. And now we're going to share this. So we can either tap and hold or hit select. We'll just do the tap and hold method and release and then tap on share. So what we want to do is export this as a song. So we'll tap on song here, uncompress wave, we'll hit share. Now from any other app, your files app, any other music creation app, you can do exactly the the same thing because all we need to do now is come across the top here and find copy to grand finale and tap on that one what it will now do is export this song and then it will bring it into grand finale and we'll be ready to start mastering our track so our track has been imported we're here in grand finale and we can start playing with this track now the first place that i like to start is with the presets when i'm using a new piece of software for a couple of reasons it can help me get a good sound straight away without a whole lot of effort but it also teaches me what the different presets do to the different settings here so it's a good way to learn now the preset that it has by default is funnily enough the default preset so here under your presets under master you can select any of these and once again you can master other instruments not just whole tracks if you want to bring Bring, say a drum in here you can use some of the drum presets here to actually master those but we're mastering a whole song so we'll leave it on default for now now the default is just going to have everything set pretty much to 12 o'clock so we've got our input gain here at zero we've got our output to zero we've got everything on but it's not actually doing much apart from a bit of limiting so what we can do let's turn it off at the top here so this power button that we have for the grand finale the main module will turn off and then we'll hit play it's just the way and that's what the track sounds like without any mastering. If we tap it on, let's play it. You can win, so it sounds exactly the same because we haven't done much. But what we can do is if we just say dial up this output gain, well, all we're doing here is adding some limiting. So what I'll do is I'll play it and I'll dial up the output gain. We've got the limiter here set to medium. So we can have it fast or slow. We'll leave it on medium and then we'll hit play and dial up the output. Talk is easy, it's hard to choose. And you can see there on our metering that the, the peaks are actually hitting up there around zero. So this is an RMS meter. We do have a LUFS meter here as well. If we tap on that meter, it changes to LUFS. Now, we don't have time to go into the whole uh, metering and the different scales and the different measurements. But if you want to look it up or if you do want a video about RMS and LUFS and metering in a future mastering video, happy to do that. But let's hit play and just see what the LUFS meter looks like here. Never had a heart of gold. So it don't matter to what you... So instead of looking at the peaks, you're getting more of that average sound. That's a very layperson's way of explaining that. So that's the basics of how we can use this. If you just want to lift your tracks and give them a little bit of a, a little bit of additional compression or limiting on there, you can do that. The other thing that I mentioned here is once we start adding more things in here, what I'm probably going to do is dial down my input gain. Why am I doing that? Well, when you're mastering, you actually want a bit of headroom. And what GarageBand does is it uses auto normal and it pushes your peaks right up to zero dB, which is okay because if we just drop this back by say six dB, then we've just basically created six dB of headroom. It's not perfect. It would be better if it didn't auto normalize, but it means that we're at least going to not be pushing right up at zero dB. So I would drop the input gain down there and then push up the output gain and balance that out. Let's just do that now. If we give ourselves some headroom and then just push up the output, we'll play. Gold, throw away. What others need, you cause pain. 
And you can hear there that it's still giving that power and that punch, but it's not sort of starting to pump and over compress and over limit. So that's a few tips going in there. But now let's jump in and play with some of the other cool presets and see what they do. So we'll go down the bottom here to our presets menu again, and let's just see what a gentle master will do. We'll tap on that one, and this will be good for explaining all the different modules here and what they do. So what the gentle master has done is it's actually put our input back to zero. We'll drop that down again, just so that we have that headroom. Our output's at 4.6, so it's just giving us a bit of limiting going on there. Limiter's set to medium. Over here on the top right, we've got no distortion on this one. We've got a bit of the compressor, that second chain of compression that's compressing our final signal at the end there. In the bottom left, we've also got compression here which you can see has been dialed around to 68 percent and then we've got some pretty consistent all around 37 percent uh, and I've just tapped them to touch them a bit there um, for our multi-band compressor. So we're doing some compression at all the different bands. You might think, well, if you're compressing every band the same, why would you do it anyway? Well, that's probably a good point. We might want to play with some of that. No stereo tool here and a little bit of boost in the bass and the treble. So let's hit play on this one and see what it sounds like. While others bleed out you better watch out. So that's the gentle master. I'd say that's a little bit more of a medium or hard master. Let's uh, let's come into the presets and see what a hard master will do now. So if we tap hard master, uh, we can see here that now we've got some different settings dialed in. We've got a bit of distortion. We've got a little bit actually less on the compressor here, but we've got more bass. So in the bass equalizer there, we've got more there and we've got more sort of compression in different areas here in the multiband compressor. So let's hit play and hear what the hard master sounds like. For what you wish for. Yeah, probably a little bit too hard for the sort of thing we're doing here. We'll come back to presets. Let's just try one more and then I will actually jump in and do it manually because this is just a good way to, to see some of the options and the presets are good. They'll guide you, but you may want to go back and dial things in yourself. So let's just go with, say, the nice pop and see what we get here. So this time, not surprisingly, because it's a pop preset, we're enhancing more of the high frequencies here in the multiband compressor. So we've got our high mids and our highs compressing more. We've got a little bit of distortion there just for some harmonic uh, fun. And then we've got a bass boost on the equalizer, which I find funny, but you know, pop music, maybe they want to push the, the, kick and, the kick drum and the bass a little bit along there. So let's hit play on this now. Not too careful. You just might get what you deserve. So you can hear, yeah, the bass is it's introducing probably a bit too much rumble in some of those drums, in the kick drum and the tom drums there. So I'm not in love with that, but it has sort of boosted and hyped up the high frequencies a little bit. And at this point, you might be thinking, yeah, this, this is good, but it doesn't have the level of control that I'd like. And that's where, you know, horses for courses. If you want absolute finite control, Final Touch is amazing. So check out that video. I've got a video all about Final Touch, a whole series, in fact, that you can check out, which will be up the top there and in the description. But if you're looking for something simple that you can use on your iPhone, then Grand Finale is kind of it. It is pretty much my favorite new mastering tool that I've only just I started using here for mastering my tracks. All right, let's now finish up by going back to scratch and I will master this track and I'll start playing with some settings and seeing how I would actually master this song here in Grand Finale. Let's get everything back to square one. We're going to tap presets here, go to the top here and hit default. And now everything has been zeroed out. We've got zero on our input and our output. We've got everything else set to 12 o'clock. We're good to go. We're ready to start. Now, you may have also noticed that we've got these power buttons here that we can turn on and off each module. So we might use those a little bit as we're going through because we might want to do some A-B comparison because you do need to be careful with mastering. If you just turn everything on, it'll just sound louder and you'll go, cool, that sounds great because it's louder. That's not really what you're looking for here. Yes, you need some loudness boost, but you also want to make sure that you're not affecting the signal and making things too overhyped and it's going to sound worse because the mastering, number one rule of mastering, I learned this from Ian Shepard, who's a fantastic mastering engineer, is do no harm. So do not make your songs sound worse after mastering them before. So let's jump in and take a look here. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop my input gain, as I said before, down to maybe minus 5 dB here, and then I'm going to dial in a little bit of limiting here to start with, but I'll probably do that again at the end just to make sure it's all sitting where it needs to. So let's just hit play on this now. It's after nine, just what you do. 
you play in the world. So you can see there, it's not getting up near zero dB yet. It's not actually doing any sort of limiting. But once we go in and add in some of these other components, we need some headroom to actually add some of that in because a lot of the things we do here will be actually compressing and uh, and adding maybe some boosting that's going to actually increase the signal. So let's come in and take a look at the compressor first of all. So we've got, if we tap on the compressor here, we've got default, gentle, and hard. Uh, we probably just want some gentle compression here. So let's tap on the gentle, and that's just the algorithm that it will use. So you don't have control of things like attack and release and threshold and the like here. It's a single dial compressor, but behind the scenes, Clef Grand will have those different algorithms set in there. You just don't have to worry about what they look like. And again, if you want that finite control, something like Final Touch will give that to you. So let's just uh, play this back and I'll dial in this compression and we'll just, we'll turn it right up just to see what it sounds like. And then I'll find a, a level where I want it to sit. Oh, for hurting you, but you don't see outside your door it's easier to just ignore you better watch out and what you can see there is in the top left of that dial, so we're looking at the compressor dial in the bottom left of the screen here, in the top left, the other side of the dial is becoming our meter. So we'll play it again and just watch the little yellow dial that's going counterclockwise. As I dial this in clockwise, you'll see how much compression, how much actual compression is being applied here. Ouch. You better get down on your knees and pray, because if you're not too... So let's just change this up. What if we went from gentle to a hard compression? Let's play that back. One day you get what you so you can hear there with the hard compression algorithm, it's starting to pump. It's starting to over limit because we've got it dialed up there. So I wouldn't want that. We'll go back to gentle compression and just make sure that it's dialed into about the right level. Cool. So you can see there as well when you're metering at the top there, when I'm playing it now, it's starting to push up a bit closer to zero. So that's why you want that headroom at the start so that you're not already at zero and you're not going to be hitting that. Remember though, we do have our output control here that we can dial that up and down to make sure that we're not either right up there at zero the whole way through or that we're not too soft at the end. And we'll adjust that when we get there. So let's look at the multiband compressor now. So as I mentioned before, your multiband compression means that you can set compression at various different frequencies. So so we can dial those in. So for me, what I probably want a little bit more on this, I think it is already got quite a lot of bass and it's pretty bass heavy, um, which tends to happen when I mix on headphones, I dial in too much bass. So what I might do is I might look more around the high mids and maybe even the high frequencies to give this a little bit of sheen and a bit of air at the top there. So let's uh, play this back and I'll start dialing in the multiband compressor. Hard rain, wet palm, always no calm, white guilt, no way, buy more, it's too late, market crash, no cash, big debt, and no stash, bankrupt, and foreclosed. All right, so I've just made a couple of changes there, just on the high mids and highs. But again, if you want to hear the difference between the two, <laughs> every time you tap on there, it, it plays again. So when you tap in the timeline, it starts playing. That's why I keep doing that there. But let's change this to, so we've got tighten the bass. We've got medium squeeze, heavy squeeze, extreme, and vocal enhancer. So let's just tap on some of these to have a bit of a play. What if we go vocal enhancer on this one and hit play? <laughs> It sounds terrible. So we'll go back to our uh, our medium squeeze. Let's just try this one. See what medium squeeze does here. It's after nine. Just what you do. You play in the world for hurting you. But you don't see outside your... And maybe what Pete's doing here is actually enhancing his vocals again and turning them up too much because I tend to do that in mixing and mastering. But I'll leave it like that for now because I just wanted to show you how we can use the multiband compressor to enhance a particular frequency there. Let's continue on now and take a look at the stereo tool. So our stereo tool is actually quite a simple operation here. We dial this in and we've got some presets here. We've got center base, widen top and widen all. So we can use the default algorithm here or we can decide what we want to do, whether we want to center that base in there and spread everything else out, whether we want to widen the top end or whether we want to widen everything, send everything out in the stereo spectrum. So for something like this, I would probably go with just widening the top 
And what we can do now, we'll leave it down. I'll hit play, and if you're listening on stereo speakers or headphones, you'll hear the mix will kind of get wider. It'll it'll spread out in the stereo spectrum. Let's hit play and take a listen. Oh, it's easier to just ignore. You better watch out. So it can make it a bit full and wide. Now I mentioned in a previous video about mixing in mono that you don't always want to sort of have things really wide because it means that once you play them back in mono, they can kind of sound a bit weird and squashed in. So I may or may not use the stereo tool here. Let's just take a bit of a listen to if we wanted to widen all and let's see what that would sound like. You better get down on your knees and pray. So to me, that sounds a bit a bit strange, like everything's gone out, your vocals aren't in the middle, your bass and things that you want in the middle aren't sitting in the middle, so I probably wouldn't use that for very many uh, mastering. You might want to use that in a particular track, so if you wanted a particular stereo effect on a synth or some other track, you could throw that into Grand Finale, do your processing, put it back into your track. So remember, it's not just for mastering, you can use this for audio processing for individual tracks as well. The final thing we have here is our equalizer, so we can just do some boosts or cuts on our bass and treble. So this might be interesting. I did say that it was a little bit too bassy. So why don't I try and dial in a little bit less bass here and see if that might actually improve this master. You're not too careful. One day you get what you deserve. So you can see there on the default setting that they don't, I turn them way up and way down, they don't do a whole lot. So we can come in here, we can do acoustic and ambient. And again, just different processing that Clef Ground's doing behind the scene. Let's just see what ambient is going to do for us. We'll hit play. Hard rain, wet pond, always no calm. White guilt, no way, buy more. So I don't actually mind that. They're just that reduction in bass using the ambient filter here is making it sound a little bit cleaner and maybe not as sort of grungy down in that bottom end. So again, you don't want to do massive changes. Mastering a track is not about huge changes. Everything should be kind of where it needs to be in the final mix. Mastering is just an enhancement. So let's now come up to the top, this additional section, because we've got a couple of things here. We've got an additional compressor. If we need a little bit more volume, we've got a distortion dial here, and then we've got some final gain that we can dial in there and a solo button on that final gain so we can just hear how much additional gain we're going to add in let's show you all of these things now so we'll start with the distortion here if we will just use the default one to start with so we can do it on the bass the low mids the high mids we can just have some sparkle and some extreme distortion so what do i want to put the distortion on probably my let's try the high mids to start with here so we'll hit play it's too late market crash no cash Big debt and no stash. Bankrupt. So yeah, that's it's not really doing much to the the mix there. What if we go extreme? Let's just take a listen to what extreme distortion. We'll turn it down and we'll dial this up. It's easier to just ignore. You better watch out. You better. Get so again, like you think distortion, you think you'd hear something that's like kind of really gravelly and really crackly like a distorted guitar. It's not really doing that. It's just adding a little bit of additional sound to that. And it, yeah, it's, it's worth experimenting with if you want. We're going to turn it off for now. We'll go back to default. So we'll go default and we'll just leave a little bit on there perhaps. Down on your knees and pray, because if you're not too careful... And finally, we've got a compressor here, which we can add some even more compression on this track. One day you get what you deserve. So if we get to the end of our chain and we're like, yeah, we still want some more compression, we could add that in. Now this gain at the end here, again, we can just dial this one in. Uh, hard rain, wet so if after everything else, we're still finding that we need some additional gain in there, we can add that. And if we hit this solo button at the top there, Always. we can turn it up and down. White no way. And just hear the impact that that's having on the whole track. So that is the whole interface and that is all the options that we have here. So what I'll do now is I'll just play, tweak these a little bit and then I'll come back and show you what the settings I've dialed in here are for my final master.
So I haven't actually changed much from when we last saw this, but uh, what I want to do now is do an AB comparison here. So if we turn mastering off, and when you turn this off, it actually turns off everything. So this will be back to your original track, even though these ones are still on. This is kind of your master button up the top here. So we'll turn it off. This is what my track sounded like coming in with the final mix. Oh, for hurting you, but you don't see. And here is my mastered version now. Outside your door, it's easier to just ignore. So, now honestly, I'm new to Grand Finale. Have I overhyped this? Have I not done enough? I'm not 100% sure. However, what I have done is down in the description and up the top there right now, there's a link to a video which is this song, the final mastered version of this track, using the very cool Clef Grand Visibel app to make a little visualization of that one. So, you can check that out if you're interested in hearing what this sounds like in its final master. And you can give me some feedback and let me know. Yeah, Pete, it was overhyped here, it had too much bass, too much treble, whatever then leave that in the comments of this video once you've checked that out. But that is going to do it. That is our intro here to Clevgrand's Grand Finale app. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions about this or anything else, leave those in the comments below. You can click or tap on the Studio Live Today icon to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video.